Hello everyone and welcome to Daisy Stalls. In my last video, I made a portrait horse of my friend's fjord and that really got me inspired and made me a lot more fond of the fjord horse than I already was. It is a breed that is native to my home country, so maybe that's why I'm a little biased. Anyways, in today's video, I'll be taking you along as I cut apart, re-sculpt and repaint another fjord horse, or a fjord mix to be exact. I hope you will enjoy this video, now let's head over to the craft table. The base for this project will actually be this model that I've had in my collection for a few years. She's a fjord mare by the brand Mojo, and I even gave her a name and everything, but today she will be cut apart and made into something different. I'm going to start by chopping off that mane using a box cutter. I try to cut off thinner chunks with more controlled motions so I don't accidentally cut my finger off or something. Oh, I almost forgot about this. A while ago, I cut off a small chunk of her mane and then re-sculpted it so the bridles would fit better on her. Well, she won't need that anymore, so off it comes. When I have cut the majority of the mane off, I start making more delicate cuts as to not leave any super rough edges, so the sculpting stage will be a little bit easier for me. Well, as cute as they are, these ears have to go. Not only does it make it hard for her to wear bridles, it also doesn't really suit my reference. This fringe looking forelock was cute for the original mold, but again, it's not what I have in mind, so off it comes. I cleaned up the cut area a bit, and she's looking like this. I must say, this is definitely the ugly stage. <laughs> the plastic shavings really do get everywhere. This model in particular is quite heavily flawed with seams and factory marks, so I'm going to use a sharp blade to cut off all of those. I took a short break for some afternoon tea. Then I started to kind of second guess if I wanted to keep the original tail or not. It looks alright, but I kind of want it to look like my custom is standing in the wind. So maybe I can switch it out for this tail. After this guy's head went to Molasses the Mule, he probably won't need his tail, so I could probably just steal it, right? Well, that's what I'm gonna do. But gosh, I forgot how tough this plastic is to cut. Like, for real, I spent like two minutes trying to get it off. Ah, finally. Remind me to not get this model again. This plastic is so weird. I ran into a small problem with the head. Because the plastic is so weird and soft, it started peeling off the horse's head like this. Anyways, I need to get the tail off my Fjord model as well. So I started cutting with the box cutter. But after a while of cutting and very little progress, my hands were feeling so sore, so I guess it's time to bring out the big guns. And there we go. The jeweler saw really came in handy. Hmm. Well, now that I'm looking at it, I'm actually not sure this tail works for this model. Well, it shouldn't be a problem. Among these random horse parts, I should have a few tails. Surely one of these will fit, right? Mm, this one looks a bit too stiff. This one could work as a swishing tail, but having a closer look, the sculpting is actually quite bad, so I don't think so. This one's pretty cute though, and the sculpting is really good. Honestly, I'm just a little bit unsure, so I think I'm going to work on some other parts of this horse and then come back to the tail later. Alright, let's start the process of making this girl look less like an alien and more like a horse using my favorite two-part epoxy sculpt. I dig out equal-sized blobs of tub A and tub B, then thoroughly mix them together. Then I begin the process of filling in the parts I have cut away. I carefully study several reference pictures and try to incorporate all the different muscles and bones you'd see on a horse like this. Mm -hmm. 
As I work on the different areas, I make sure to go in with a medium sized needle and add some fur texture before the epoxy cures. I almost never bother doing this, but because this model is quite heavily textured, I thought it would be worth it to make the transition from epoxy to plastic seamless. There really is something about this model's face that is just a bit off. I can't really put my finger on it, but I think I need to try to fix it. Perhaps making her face more dished would help? Well, I'm not quite sure about it, but let's fill it in with epoxy and see how it looks. While sculpting, I realized she has this very harsh dip by her muzzle, and I don't think that's helping my case, so let's fill that in as well. Something that really helps me look for flaws in models is looking at the silhouette. I hold the model up to a window like this, and this way I can objectively look at the silhouette and not be distracted by any contrast in color or anything like that. I feel pretty happy with how the face is looking, so I go ahead and add hair texture to the soft epoxy. Now there was some text on her belly, and I just filled it in with more epoxy of course, and also added some hair texture. But then the thought of adding my own signature popped into my head. You see, I have this set of leather stamps I bought a while ago, but I haven't used them much. I think this is the perfect opportunity though. I carefully line them up, then press them into the epoxy. Hey, look at that! That's actually really cool, I really like that. If you're interested, I found this for cheap on eBay, and you can probably find it on AliExpress too. I'll try to leave a link down below if I can find some. Anyways, back to sculpting. You've probably seen me use this tool in pretty much all of my videos, and since I use it so much with epoxy, some of it does harden on it, and it gets stuck. So just in case you're wondering, this is how I get it off when that happens. She has this pretty big air bubble on her knee here, so I'm going to fill that in with more epoxy. And because I always seem to mix up a little bit too much epoxy, I'm going to use the leftovers to give her some chestnuts on her legs. Before I start tackling the ears, I'm going to cover up the rest of the cut area with more epoxy. So, let's make the ears. I pick out a drill bit that is a little bit thicker than the wire I plan to use. Then I drill two holes into the horse's head where I think the ear should go. And now I'm using a thick florist wire and inserting that into the holes to act like an armature. I also apply a little bit of super glue to make sure they stay in place. I mix up some more epoxy clay, then I start sculpting it into a rough ear shape. Then I try my best to kind of awkwardly wrap it around the wire and secure it to the horse's head. Well, they don't look great so far, but this is only the base. I'm going to let these cure and then we'll continue later. Epoxy cures slowly, but a little bit faster when it's warm, and I was getting a bit impatient, so I just kind of <laughs> awkwardly propped my model up like this over my wall heater, and uh, yeah. Alright, the ears are fully cured now, so I'm going to continue refining the shape and overall just making them look a little bit better. And since she is a fjord, you know she better have those fantastic fluffy ears. I don't think I'm fully satisfied with them just yet, but I'm going to let these cure for now. 
In the meantime, I'm going to be using this PBO porcelain liner to add some textural details to the eyes and muzzle. Alright, now that I'm done with that, I'm going to give her a quick spray with my primer to pick out any imperfections and to get an overview of how she's looking. The primer revealed that the sculpting job on the left side of the neck was a little bit uneven, so I'm going to correct that with more epoxy. Whenever I'm done with sculpting something quite detailed, I like to take a wet paintbrush and run it across the surface just to smooth everything out and make the transition more seamless. Well, after having taken a break from the ears, I am definitely still not satisfied with them. But I still can't put my finger on what's wrong, so I'm going to ask you guys over on Instagram for your input. Although 92% of you said that the ears looked good, the other 8% came with some very good criticism. For example, some of you pointed out that the ears might be a bit small and also set a bit far back on the head, so I took these into consideration and got out the epoxy. As much as I talk about epoxy on this channel, they don't sponsor me, but epoxy if you're watching this and want to, well, my email is on my channel. Anyways, what I'm doing with the ears is fattening up the base a little bit because they were looking a bit thin and awkward. I also decided to make the ears a little bit bigger. Here you can see I've done it on one and it looks a lot better, so I'm going to do it on the other one now. To make them a bit bigger, I lay a snake of epoxy around the edge of the ear like this, then try my best to smooth it out and make the transition seamless. Yeah, I really like them a lot more now. So thank you guys so much for your great input, I really appreciate it. So after more work than I anticipated originally, I am finally happy with how the girl is looking, so I guess it's time to give her that mane. So as usual, I sculpt the mane by laying down thick snakes of epoxy, then using a needle and some water to sculpt the hair texture. And that's the forelock pretty much done. I actually think it works pretty well with her face. Then I continue with the same methods to sculpt her mane. I sculpt the mane to make it look like she's standing in the wind, both because I want kind of out and about trail pony kind of vibes, but also because it gets the mane away from her ears so she can wear bridles more easily. I really don't consider myself the best sculptor when it comes to flowy manes, but I think this one is alright. Now, what are we gonna do about that tail? <laughs> now, the old one is really stiff and it definitely doesn't suit the mane, but I still feel like it's the best match. Hmm, maybe I can spruce it up with some more epoxy. <laughs> Let's hope I can pull this off. You know what? Yeah, I actually really like that. It looks a bit more flowy and like it's actually in the wind, so I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to let it cure for a couple hours before I spray it with some primer to pick out any imperfections. And I was lucky this time. There are no major flaws, so I'm going to go ahead and reattach it to the horse. And after a little bit of sculpting to fill the gap that didn't need to be there in the first place, <clears throat> the tail is looking clean and ready to be painted. Yes, after many hours of unexpected work, it is finally time to get out the paints. I use a watered down mixture of brown and white and paint that on the model in several layers until it's fully opaque. Now, painting on the base color really looks like a simple and quick process, but I assure you it takes forever. <laughs> I do kind of bring it upon myself, I do admit, because I do many watered down layers of acrylic as opposed to one thick one. You can see when I bring the model into a different lighting, there are some areas where the original color is shining through and I need to get rid of that. 
So to keep an overview over where I need to paint while I'm painting, I actually turn my lamp away from the model and this really helps me at this stage. And when the base coat is completely opaque and dry, I'm finally going to give it a spray of my sealant in preparation for the pastel stage. Now despite saying this, I am using Liquitex Matte Varnish, but I do not recommend it. I recently picked up a Mr. Super Clear sealant and that one is so much better and it is not yellow, so I'd recommend you use that instead. In my previous video, I am still using the Liquitex varnish. I really wish I wasn't because it is still very yellow, but the Mr. Super Clear ended up not working with the pastels. So my hunt for the perfect sealant continues. Apparently I got a little bit carried away and oversprayed her a little bit, but I think it actually filled in some of the hair texture and I'm not against that. Because of that, she took a little bit longer to dry, so I set her outside for a couple minutes to prevent any dust from settling on her. Now, after two layers of the sealant, she's finally ready for some pastels. As per usual, I'm using my Gallery by Mungyo Artist Self Pastels. I'm going to grind my pastels into a dust using this fine mesh. And to catch the dust, I'm using a repurposed yogurt lid. I mostly use white and a few brown tones until I achieve my desired color. I put a glove on the hand I'll be holding the horse with, and then it's time to apply the pastels. When I'm done with a layer of pastel and getting ready to spray another layer of varnish, I make sure to go over the entire body with a fluffy brush to get rid of any stray dust. You can see the dust is flying everywhere, so make sure you wear a filtration mask. The rest of the pastel stage really just consists of applying your pastels, then spraying your sealant in between each layer. I also deliberately chose a very light pastel mix to apply to the entire body and this was done to avoid those pesky grains that you can get with pastel sometimes. And also in between each layer of varnish, I apply a layer of light grey to her eyes and muzzle. When I'm done applying the last layer of pastel, which for me was the fourth layer, I actually spray her with my Mr. Super Clear varnish. It's a super great varnish on all levels, except that the pastels don't stick to it, so that's why I use it like I do. And here she is, after four layers of pastels, she's looking great, and there's not much graininess on her either. So now it's time to paint her mane and add some details with acrylic paint. Again, I watered down the paint a fair amount to avoid losing any details in that sculpted mane. A little tip while you're painting the mane, make sure to look at it from many angles because it's so easy to miss the edges and sides like I've done here. Even though she is a fjord mix, she doesn't get to opt out of that classic mane. So when the brown mane is opaque, I'm going to start blending in some off-white stripes. To really get it right, I think I spent around 3 hours on this mane, but I'm very pleased with it. This video is getting so long, so let's speed stuff up. I use the same methods to paint the tail in a similar fashion. Painting the dorsal stripe is always daunting, but I think I did alright. Then I was going to paint the eyes, and... <laughs> Okay, don't panic. I quickly sucked the paint up with a dry paintbrush and it was fine. <laughs> Anyways, I continue painting the eyes as usual, adding some black, then some blue and brown, and a bit of gold metallic paint. Then with a few more details and finishing touches, this mare is finally done. I decided to name her Mittel, 
which is an older Norwegian girl's name. The name's origin is believed to be from the plant name Mitch. Even though I always thought Mitch or Mitchell was the Latin name for blueberries, I'm not so sure anymore, but I still really like the name. I kind of wanted it to mean blueberries since she's kind of like a forest girl, but anyways, that was a rabbit hole. In all seriousness, I am so happy with her, like way more than I expected, and she turned out just like I wanted. I tacked her up in my Australian trail riding set, and now she looks so much like my reference picture. I love it! That was it for this time. Thank you all so much for watching this video and supporting this channel. It means so much to me. And if you have not subscribed already and want more videos like this, please consider it. Alright, that was all I had to say. Bye!